So now we're going to start with the next thing, variables. Now variables are part of any programming language, and a variable is an empty container that we can fill with different values. And we're going to use this in our games. So as we create games, we're going to use variables. We're going to create containers that we can fill with different values. In other words, we're going to need a variable for what game level we're on. We're going to need a variable for how many points we have. We're going to need a variable for how many lives we have. We're going to need a variable for maybe our character name. Those types of things, right? So I'm just pointing this out. This is just regular text here. I'm not typing any code here. I'm just pointing out that we need basically variables for these different things. For our character name, for our lives, for our points, and for our game level. Right? Now in Flash, there are a lot of different variables that you can create. But we're just going to focus on some of the basic variable types. We don't just call this any type, we call it a data type. So the data types that we're going to look at for these variables are the basic ones, which are a number variable, a string variable, and a Boolean variable. So three variable data types, number, string, and Boolean. So we're going to start with our first data type, the number data type. So I'm going to go down here and I'll say the number variable. So to create a variable in Flash, once again these are just comments here, to create a variable in Flash what we do is we just say the keyword var, right, and then the name of our variable. So I'll say var and then I'll say game lives, right? and then a semicolon to end it. Now that creates a variable called game lives, right? Or in fact, we'll put game level. I like that better. Now notice here how I've written game level. This variable has two words in it and they're connected. There's no spaces. So you can't put a space in your variable. Notice how I've also made the L capital here. We call that camel case in scripting or programming when you connect two words together to make a variable and essentially uh, with no spaces, but you use uppercase on the second word so that it's easier to read. You're able to distinguish where game and level begin. So that's called camel case, right? So I've put game level and case is important in Flash. Flash is, action script is case sensitive, so this is game level, not all lowercase, it has now an uppercase L here, right? Also, another thing about variables. Variables can be created with letters, numbers, and an underscore, but it has to start with a letter. In other words, if I type var1 game level, right, and I hit control enter, I get a red error message in my code. And you can see here, scene one, identifier expected. You can see there's an error, right? So I'll close the Flash movie, open up my actions window, but if you see if I do game level and put a number on there, like let's say three, you can see that there's no problem with that variable. I could also type this as game underscore, let's say level, if you're not into the camel case. And you can see there's no objection there, right? Okay, notice when I'm doing this, I keep getting this trace here, hello world, at the bottom, and that's fine. No errors. All right, so we'll say this game level, use the camel case, and now what I want to do, now that I have a variable called game level, I'm going to trace it. So I'll say trace game level. And when I do that and hit control enter and publish my flash movie, you'll notice here at the bottom that we have the hello world from our first trace statement. And then when we trace game level, it says undefined. That's because this variable game level is a container that we haven't made equal to anything yet. We haven't set it to anything. It really is just that, an empty container. So let's try to make it, or let's try to um, assign a value to it. So what I'll do now is on the next line, I'll say game level, notice capital L, 
equals, and this is an assignment operator, I'm going to talk about operators more in a minute, let's say equals 1 and then a semicolon. Notice how I end each line with a semicolon. So now if I hit control enter, you'll see that we see a 1 here in the output window. Hello world gets traced and then the next trace statement traces the 1. So now the variable game level has been assigned the value 1. And this is an example of basically a number variable. Now what I can do is, is I can put this whole thing on one line if I want. In other words, I can say var game level equals 1. And that creates the variable game level and assigns it the value 1. And then if I trace it out, you can see it's equal to 1. So now let's look at the other variable types. So we'll go down here and we'll look next at the string variable. Now with the string variable, let's give it, we'll declare it var, and we'll say char for character, and then capital N name. So that'll be, let's say, short for character name, char name, and then we'll say char name, that would declare the variable and create it, and then on the next line we could do a char name equals, and then we'd put the name in here, and we could say char name equals let's say hero and then a semicolon. So a string variable, a string is a string of text or a string of letters or textual letters and numbers in between quotation marks. So to create a string you use uh, let's say double quotation marks and anything inside of it is basically a string of text. So char name equals hero and then we can trace it and hit control enter and you can see down here it says hero. So that's the second type that we were talking about. We've done a number variable and a string variable. Now what I can do is I'll just put this all on one line, declare the variable and assign the value of this string right here, hero. And the next one is the boolean variable. Now with a boolean variable we'll say We'll declare it, we'll say var, and we'll say char for character, and we'll say dead with a capital D. So this variable will keep track of whether our character is alive or dead. So we say var char dead, and then we'll set it. We'll say character dead equals, and a Boolean variable gets only one of two values, either true or false. So we'll say false. So now our variable character dead is false, meaning that the character, let's say, is alive. Right? And a, let's trace it and just see if it works. All right, we'll trace it out. And you can see down here in the output window, you can see hero false. Right, and you can see there I can scroll up. So you've got one, right? Hello world, one, hero, and then false. Now a Boolean variable is either true or false. Now this is useful in our programming because we're going to use it to basically turn things on and off in our game, kind of like a flag. A Boolean variable is used like a flag. Um, if you want to think of, if you've ever been um, water skiing, and you're water skiing and what happens when the skier falls down into the water the um, person on the boat raises the red flag and the red flag going up lets everybody know that the skier is down right so if there's no red flag that means the skier is skiing red flag goes up the skiers in the water and everybody knows to be careful well in programming it's very simple it's very similar we can use a boolean variable to set things true and false which will then reflect a state in our game. So here are the three basic types of variables. We've got a number, a string, and a boolean. One important thing that I haven't mentioned yet, but that I need to make explicit, and that is that the programmer chooses the name of the variable. And it's good practice to make your variable names 
reflect things in your game that you're going to need. In other words, these variables that I created, I could have made them, let's say, a variable like in algebra. I could have made this variable equal to x, and this variable, I could have made this one equal to y, and then of course you'd have to trace x and trace y. But if I did that, then it would be very hard to know what was the purpose of this container. What was the purpose of x when I created this variable? It would be very hard to look at x and say, oh yeah, I used x for the game level, right? So we want the names that we give our variables to be descriptive to let us know what they're trying to affect within the game.